Hello, and welcome to the 2021 Inclusive Leader Awards Ceremony. Thank you for joining us tonight to meet the luminaries of inclusion, diversity, and equity. It's my pleasure to introduce Kyle Hibble, one of our main sponsors. Hello, I am so excited to welcome you to the Global Minded Inclusive Leader Awards 2021. My name is Kyle Hibble, and I'm fortunate to serve as president and CEO of Elkamar Foundation. Our founders, Spencer and Julie Penrose in 1937, charged us with the mission to enhance, encourage and promote the current and future well-being of the people of Colorado. The trustees and staff of El Pomar are proud to support the work of Global Minded in its drive to ensure that the future of work is diverse, inclusive, just, and equitable. It's a commitment that we share collectively. On behalf of El Pomar Foundation and its trustees, congratulations to each exceptional inclusive leader being recognized tonight. Your example, your effort, and commitment change the trajectory of lives and promote the just and equitable workforce, communities, and citizenry of our future. Well done and well earned. And now I'd like to introduce Blaine Ruschak, president of the PhD Project and our other presenting sponsor this evening. Blaine. I'm Blaine Ruschak. I'd like to take this time to thank our other event sponsors tonight. They are Amazon, Ascendium, the Colorado Health Foundation, the International Labor Foundation, and Pearson. As one of the presenting sponsors for this evening's award, the PhD project, which was an initiative of the KPMG Foundation, was founded 27 years ago to encourage and motivate highly successful Black and African American, Hispanic and Latinx, and Native American business professionals and students to enter PhD business programs and become role models and mentors to the next generation of diverse talent. Now, almost 2,000 faculty later, these pioneering leaders are professors at information systems and business. They are deans and even college presidents. Global Minded is one of our critical diverse talent pipeline supply partners into the PhD project. And we are delighted to be here tonight to recognize each of you. I'd like to congratulate all of tonight's honorees for their contributions to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it is now my pleasure to introduce the founder and CEO and a wonderful person, Global Minded CEO, Carol Carter. Thank you, Blaine and Kyle, and thanks to each of you for joining us to recognize these remarkable role models this evening. Global Minded creates a capable, diverse talent pipeline to get more women, people of color, and all manner of diverse candidates into the education, economic mobility, and leadership pipeline. We do this with a focus on first generation to college students, minoritized and poverty affected students who are the wellspring of our talent pipeline by connecting them to role models, mentors, experiences, internships, and jobs. Tonight, our spotlight is on the role models, the pioneering leaders who are the inspiration, not just for students we serve, but for all of us. Joining us this evening are our prior award winners from 2019 and our 2020 winners who will be introducing the 2021 honorees. It is my pleasure now to introduce you to Dr. Crystal Rose, PhD and MD, who is our valued partner and co-producer of these awards since they began. Crystal. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be with you all here today. As Carol says, until these winners become household names like celebrities, actors, and athletes, we'll not have made the progress necessary to change the world for the better. When we look back in history, these will be the leaders to take note of. And your focus and attention today can bring this positive trajectory. Consider this celebration to be the Academy Awards for Inclusion, Diversity, and Equity. And if any of you are going through something difficult now, listening to today's winners will confirm you have within yourself the depths of greatness. And today, whether you find your place and your privilege to make a difference or you push past and persevere, wherever you find yourself, Together, 
we can make the world better. Now we look to these heroes we have today. They will be introduced with their real life behind the scenes stories while accepting their awards. They'll share with us their visionary lens for their field. So our challenge to you today, let their vision transform you, provide you hope, inspiration, and encourage you. Thank you for showing up. Know you yourself are enough. Now we're launching into this awaited ceremony for which I've had the honor to be executive producer. And without further ado, let the awards begin. As last year's honoree, it is my great pleasure to introduce the Early Childhood Education Award recipient for 2021. This year's winner was born in rural Southern France. As a young child, she experienced firsthand high quality early learning environments, starting with home and childcare and the French universal public preschool system. This was her norm and the norm for 99% of all the little ones in her village. Free and high quality early childhood education. This experience became the foundation for her love of learning and lifelong opportunities. However, after immigrating to the U.S. and becoming a new parent, she realized the situation here in America was very different. Despite many privileges, she struggled to find quality childcare. 75% of parents in America experienced the same struggle. She decided to focus her career on impact investing and philanthropy to provide each and every child access to high quality affordable and joyful learning. She is authoring a book on the future of early learning, which I am greatly looking forward to reading. It is my honor to introduce my dear colleague, Isabel Howe, as this year's Inclusive Leader Award winner in early childhood education. Thank you, Portia, for the touching words. My message today is a grave one. We have an early childhood crisis in the US. Why? A majority of young children are not healthy and ready to learn. 58% to be exact, according to the US Department of Health and Human Services. And we know that children who start behind are more likely to stay or fall further behind. By underinvesting in early childhood, we are effectively shattering meaningful human talent potential. Unfortunately, most crises do not have equitable effects. Early childhood is not an exception. We have what I call an early childhood apartheid. The word may sound strong, but I'm not sure what other word to use when an abysmal 1% of Latino children and 4% of Black children are reported to have access to high quality preschool. The time is now to address this urgent and growing crisis. In climate change, advocates strive for zero emission and zero waste. What if we were to imagine a future with zero human potential waste? Not only we can do this, we must. Our future depends on it. Thank you again to the Global Minded team. Hello, I'm Mort Sherman. Associate of Executive Director at ASA, the School Superintendents Association. We lead all of the professional learning for superintendents across America, including our urban superintendents program. For me, it's a personal and professional honor to introduce this year's Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award winner in the K-12 category. Growing up as a Mohawk Indian in Rhode Island, our winner was in a city far from his indigenous roots. Many of the Mohawk men worked as iron workers, making basic wagers in small towns throughout the Northeast. Raised in a lower middle-class family, his mother working in factories and his father's a machinist, he didn't grow up with the traditional Native American ways. As an activist in his young adult years, he lives in the Pine Ridge Reservation, where he first saw extreme poverty for Native American people, a life without any of the resources that he took for granted in his public school upbringing. Many years working for Native American rights led him to become 
This is remarkable, a Sundance on the Rosebud Indian Reservation, one of the highest honors of the Plain Indian tribes. Committed to working on behalf of his ancestral people, his life's mission centers on improving education for schools that lacked running water, books, and other fundamental resources. Finding inspiration in the remarkable graduates, he dedicates his life to supporting their gifts and talents with funding, policies, and awareness. A first-generation college graduate, an Air Force and Vietnam veteran, he is now acting executive director for the White House Initiative on American Indian and Alaska Native Education. Please join me in congratulating this year's winner, Ron Lassard. Congratulations, and thank you for all the remarkable work you do. Thank you, Mark and Global Mind Ed. I am honored to receive the Inclusive Leader Award. I am blessed by the creator to have the opportunity to work in the field of Indian education with so many K through 12 committed students, teachers, and administrators. I dedicate this award to each one of them and those that came before them. I am committed to the ensuring that native children attain educational equity, being attentive to the unique cultural, social, linguistic, and spiritual needs of native students Honoring their ancestral strength and resilience is critical to achieving that goal. From the traumatic experience of the boarding school era to the lack of resources during the COVID-19 pandemic, Native students continue to thrive and will continue to become strong leaders with their tribal communities and throughout the world. As Native Americans, we are connected by the sacred Mother Earth to Indigenous peoples around the globe. It is our responsibility to make decisions in the best interests of our children. The decisions we make today will affect seven generations of Native children, families, and communities. All my relations. Hello. It is my honor to introduce the Higher Education Award winner for 2021 on behalf of last year's recipient, Dr. Amy Guzman, who is now Ambassador-elect to Germany. I'm Harold L. Martin, Sr., Chancellor of North Carolina A&T State University. Growing up near Memphis in a two-room house, her family and neighbors had neither running water nor sewage. What the family lacked in amenities, they made up for in love, conviction, and proactive leadership. She and her father watched one of their good neighbors' homes burn to the ground because the department uh, would not send firefighters, which was right across the street from the fire. Her father led a march on the city the very next day. She grew up with the knowledge that the relationship between politics and education is a straight line. After attending Tennessee State University, where she is now the president, as a first generation to college student, she earned many degrees, an MBA, a CPA, PhD, and a JD from Georgetown Law. This allowed her a seat at the table. And as she has said, you can't make changes happen if you're not at the table. Understanding the power of networks to mobilize change, she also serves as the international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority and on three boards of publicly traded companies. It is my honor to introduce my colleague and longtime friend, Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover, as this year's Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award winner in higher education. I am honored to receive this Inclusive Leader Award as the president of Tennessee State University. Tennessee State is a comprehensive urban land grant HBCU with over 8,000 students offering degrees at the bachelor, master's, and doctorate levels. Our country cannot reach its goals without strong, sustainable HBCUs, goals necessary to close the education gap, health gap, wealth, and economic gaps. HBCUs have changed the college landscape, made enormous contributions, and achieved in spite of continuous challenges and limited resources. For example, HBCUs account for just 3% of colleges in this country, where produced 22% of bachelor degrees earned by African Americans, 25% of African Americans with STEM degrees, 50% of African American school teachers, 50% of African American lawyers, 50% of African-American doctors, 83% of African-American judges, 24% of PhDs earned each year by African-Americans are conferred by HBCUs. 
and the Vice President of the United States graduated from an HBCU. These achievements were earned despite the fact that funding has been disproportional and their endowments were 70% less than white institutions. So I'm pleased to mention this value proposition of HBCUs as HBCUs have consistently had to do more with less. HBCUs continue their role in resolving many of the challenges that threaten the general welfare and prosperity of our country. For these reasons and more, HBCUs are critical pieces that benefit not just the economy, but the world at large. Billions of dollars in state funding have gone to other institutions that should have gone to HBCUs. The solution is clear. Wall Street and financial companies must do their part to right these wrongs, contribute and fund these important institutions that are key to a brighter tomorrow, reversing generations of financial and social inequities for Black people. Finally, all companies need to make a commitment to hire HBCU graduates. We must establish partnerships that strengthen HBCUs, support the students they serve, and close the gaps that put HBCUs on equal footing with majority institutions. At HBCUs, we see Black excellence at its best. It's never too late to do what's right. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chantaline Carpentier, and I serve as the chief of the New York office of the Secretary General of the UN Conference on Trade and Development. I am pleased to introduce the 2021 Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award winner in the government category. Her father passed away when she was five, her brother barely a year old. Born and raised in the Philippines, she saw how her mother, widow at 22, was determined to raise her ch two children the best way she could as a single working mom with the help of the entire clan. She saw this profound sense of unconditional support, love, generosity, acceptance, and kindness extended not only from her family, but from the teachers, friends, and members of the community. Like the older couple who owned the corner bake shop, she visited every morning for the her pan de sal, a classic Filipino bread roll. Being raised by the village, she realized the importance of a collective effort to do good. These values shaped her path through the years, guiding her success in life, business, humanitarian work, philanthropy, and her enduring collaborative relationship across the globe. It is my true honor to introduce the 2021 winner, a fellow UN community member, advocate, and friend, Janet C. Salazar. Thank you, Chantaline, for that thoughtful introduction. My deepest gratitude to Carl Carter, Crystal Gross, and the entire team and board at Global Minded, a really powerful collective force behind today's celebration of our endeavors, challenges, and victories. I am humbled and honored to be in this moment in time with you all. My wish for my sector is for all of us to have that collective will, energy and accountability, spiritual stamina, and strength to maximize our collective contributions for a better social ecosystem that benefits everyone. How we want to transform our sector, which is a kaleidoscope of a variety of inputs, will draw upon everyone's unique gifts, abilities, talents, and celebrated differences. Therefore, we must cultivate a language of respect and peace and a culture of brave actions as we govern the world more effectively today than any other time in history across boundaries, borders, BIPOC populations, and best known local heroes. With this award and your wishes, let this be granted. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Pierre Theodore, Vice President of Global Public Health at Johnson & Johnson. And it is my pleasure to introduce this year's global-minded, inclusive leader in health and wellness. Dr. Georges C. Benjamin has worn many hats in an illustrious career in academia, 
the military, healthcare leadership, and as a White House advisor. Motivation often happens through our private experience. And Dr. Georges had a brother who had sickle cell anemia. In medical school, this sparked his interest to increase his scientific knowledge and study his illness. He began his career in internal medicine in the military, eventually training at the Army's flagship hospital, Walter Reed Medical Center in Washington, DC. And this laid a strong foundation in clinical medicine. Dr. Benjamin is a member of the prestigious National Academy of Medicine. He is known as one to lead by example, marrying self-confidence with humility in a manner that inspires trust among those who follow him to achieve important healthcare goals. Dr. Benjamin took on the leadership of the American Public Health Association in 2002 as its executive director. For 150 years, the APHA has been a champion of health and of all people and all communities. And in the last two years, more than any time in its long history, the importance of health equity, advocacy, and the medical science guiding public policy could not be more clear. In light of his many accomplishments, it is an honor to introduce Dr. Georges C. Benjamin, the 2021 global-minded inclusive leader in health and wellness. Thank you, Dr. Theodore and Global Minded. I have always seen myself as a leader, both in my role as physician and as a healer. This has been a very challenging year for our nation and the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged us like no event in modern times. It has required principal and inclusive leadership across a variety of sectors to respond effectively and bring it under control. Interestingly, the American Public Health Association, where I serve as the executive director, was around in 1918, the last time we had a pandemic of this magnitude. Now, just like then, the public health community has responded aggressively to reduce the impact of the public of this terrible disease. Public health is about health promotion and disease prevention, but when trouble occurs, it's also about health protection. I am honored to be recognized as an inclusive leader, specifically at a time in our nation's history where societal stress and political divisiveness is so prevalent. Now is a time where principled and inclusive leadership can be most helpful to heal our nation and provide life-saving protection for the world. Thank you again for this honor. I'm Carla Harris, Vice Chairman and Managing Director with Morgan Stanley. I am pleased to introduce the 2021 Global-Minded Inclusive Leader in the Banking and Finance Sector, whose upbringing belies his illustrious banking career. The oldest child of dreamers who migrated to the U.S. from the West Indies. Both of his parents were raised by single mothers dedicated to bettering their families' lives. From the 1940s to the 60s, Bedford-Stuyvesant went from 75% white to 85% black. Our winner grew up witnessing the sting of white flight and redlining. A defining moment in his life occurred in a motorcade with Ethel and Robert Kennedy. Driving through the poorest black and poorest white sections of South Bend, Indiana, Kennedy turned to him and said, if I get elected president, I'm going to need your help to bring the change needed to expand opportunities in these communities. Later that day, Martin Luther King was assassinated and a few months later, Robert Kennedy was too. These events defined his calling to expand opportunities for others by linking community, government, and private enterprise through community economic development. It is my pleasure to introduce this year's winner, President, Access Capital Strategies at Royal Bank of Canada Global Asset, Ron Homer. Congratulations. Thank you, Carla, for your kind words and introduction. It is indeed an honor to receive this award in your footsteps, since I've long admired your accomplishments and leadership. Also, thank you, Global Minded. As a first generation immigrant and college graduate, I myself have been the beneficiary of support from mentors and have been inspired by role models. 
I fully appreciate how important these relationships and associations have been for my own personal and professional development. Therefore, I accept this award as a byproduct of that inspiration and support. Most importantly, I want to recognize and encourage my colleagues in the financial services industry who choose to use their experience, expertise, and influence to help foster a stronger and more inclusive society. The measurable disparate impact of the COVID-19 pandemic alongside growing social unrest throughout the world calls for an exponential increase in our efforts to provide access and equity for all. I am convinced that we can achieve the sustainable and impact or outcomes that we envision if we all work together. Thank you. Good evening. I'm AJ Grant, the 2020 Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award winner in energy and sustainability sector. And I'm honored that I get to introduce this year's winner. Our winner was influenced by a long line of amazing women, including his maternal grandmother, who born in 1907, became a doctor in Pakistan and delivered an entire generation of babies in her town. She was a slight woman, and when she did surgery, men had to pull the saw for her. Then her daughter, our winner's mom, was also a doctor and as an epidemiologist specialized in public health. His father, a PhD, made it his goal to understand and address the needs of the most vulnerable and men serving them. He was also a visionary about climate change long before the term was coined. When our winner suffered an injury 10 years ago and was paralyzed on the right side, his life mission became clear to serve the world through the environment and through gender, LBGTQIA+, and human rights. His goal is to recognize each individual for who they truly are. It's my great pleasure to introduce this winner, the senior advisor of the Protect Our Planet pop movement, Dr. Ash Pukari. Thank you, AJ. Thank you ever so much. And thank you to, uh, from the depths of my heart for this great honor. I'm truly humbled and overflowing with gratitude. Thank you, Carol, Crystal, Celeste, and the entire Global Minded Universe that exemplifies and stands for the highest human values of love and inclusion. Today, we have an opportunity as society to ensure that every effort to protect our planet and secure a future for all embraces a new heartbeat of inclusivity. We must demonstrate action to achieve the goals of equity, fairness, and equality. The truth is that everything on earth is interconnected and in fine balance. The pandemic has taught us that when one part of the world is hurting, every part of the world hurts. True progress can only be made if we carry everyone with us. At the pop movement, we look at this moment in history as an opportunity rather than a challenge. We must build solutions which begin and belong to all of us. Our tagline is youth inspired by knowledge. This knowledge is of science and our values to stand strong as a universal family. With this great honor that I'm humbly here receiving today comes great responsibility that I strive to deliver on with integrity and through my every action from now until the end of time. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jose Hernandez, former astronaut and president of Tierra Luna Engineering. I am pleased to introduce the Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award winner in space in aerospace. After an 8.1 earthquake and struck in Mexico City in 1983, when she was in middle school, our winner suffered indelible losses and injuries amongst her family and friends. Experiencing such widespread death and destruction at such a young age gave her a deep commitment to care for others and to be better for others. Survivor's guilt is a motivating force for her raised by her single mom and grandfather. Her aunt's life, a Russian kidnapped for four years by the Nazis and tasked with building weapons, had a big impact on her as she was a model of survivorship. At the age of seven, our winner became an avid reader of books bought by her mom from door-to-door -door salesmen. There she learned about the space shuttle 
and thus ignited a lifelong passion. It wasn't until high school when she immigrated to California that she first had the chance to use a computer. Now breaking barriers as one of the few Latina engineers pioneering space research and mentoring students along the way, it is my pleasure to introduce this year's winner, Ali Guarneros Luna. Ali, felicitaciones. Thank you, Jose. In the midst of adversity, perils, and disappointment, I always look for the light to guide me to be better and justify my existence for being alive. It was difficult to experience tragedy and loss of life at a very young age, but I never let go of my dreams since the age of seven to become an aerospace engineer. It took me 25 years to accomplish that dream. Also, it gave me the opportunity to inspire our next generation of scientists and engineers by representing my community, to impact the industry by training those future engineers and scientists, and to create a diversity by focusing efforts to support those students that need to overcome socioeconomic difficulties, just like me. I need to leave this world better than I found it, and that is my hope for my field as well, that we all work together in a space and aerospace to harness the great diversity of talents. It is a great honor to be selected for this award, Thank you, Jose, and the Global Minded, and those who supported me during my life to become the person that I am today. Hello, I'm Lonnie Phillips, Vice President of Channel Sales at Microsoft Corporation. It is my pleasure as the 2020 Inclusive Leader Award winner in technology to introduce the 2021 Outstanding Winner. Growing up, in Charlotte, North Carolina, this year's winner was raised by a single mom who married at the age of 17, had four children by the age of 22, and was divorced at the age of 25. His mom drove home the importance of education with this quote, sail the sea of ambition and land on the shore of success. Living in low income housing, getting free and reduced fee lunches at school, our winner got his first break in middle school when he got on the academic honors curriculum as the only African-American. He attended UNC Chapel Hill, where he came out as gay. He matriculated to Howard University School of Law. Then he clerked for the only African-American justice in North Carolina, Justice Henry Fry. Entering private practice, his first law firm had a policy against gays as partners. So he knew he would have to make impact elsewhere. 30 years ago, he was hired by AT&T to manage their legal affairs, where he's now president of the Western Division, comprising 19 Western states. He and his husband have two children and live in the Bay Area. Please join me in congratulating our 2021 technology winner, Mr. Ken McNeely. This is so, such an incredible award. Uh, first, let me say what an honor it is to be included in such a group of distinguished individuals. I am humbled by today's recognition. I've long sought to live my life authentically, and I truly believe that the very thing that makes one different from others might be the very thing which becomes their value add to an organization or a group, the one thing it needed to succeed. So I've never tried to hide, pass, or diminish my difference. I see it as one secret sauce. Some say great minds think alike. I say great minds think differently. Nowhere is diversity of thought and experience more important than in the technology industry. But no place is it more sorely underrepresented than in the, the technology industry. The tech industry has long fought a battle against sameness. Strides are being made, but there's still a long way to go. Creativity thrives when different life experiences are explored in search of a common solution, tackling it from different perspectives. That's real innovation. I often wonder how much we miss when only one side of a problem and solution is explored. The answer must be inclusion, casting a wide net of talent, life experience, and educational background. Only then can we truly be greater than the sum of our parts. I'm so grateful to be able to play a small role in this effort. Again, what an honor to be included in such an August group. Thank you so very much. Hello, I'm Shelly Zalas, CEO of The Female Quotient. 
and I am thrilled to present this year's Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award in the entrepreneurship sector. Our honoree grew up with a strong mother who was the greatest force in her young years and indeed throughout her life. Her mother and father were professional basketball players in Mexico City, but they divorced after the death of their two children. Our winner was the sole surviving child ever aware of the burden of her life to carry forward in the best possible way on behalf of her dear siblings. She says, quote, my mother taught me that everything was possible, even overcoming the deep pain and loss of death, end of quote. Her mother went from a basketball champion to becoming a respected economist. And while our young honoree was still school-aged, her mother pivoted yet again as she left her economics position to follow her passion as an actress. Her mother was petrified, but stayed true to this decision to follow her heart. Fear has no power over her. This attitude became a guiding star for our dear honoree today. Throughout the many enterprises and initiatives she launched, she has consistently worked to defeat the biggest challenges that humanity faces and strives to achieve the most powerful of possibilities. It is my greatest pleasure to introduce Claudia Romo Edelman, founder of We're All Human and global-minded, inclusive leader in the entrepreneurship category. Congratula congratulations, Claudia. Te amamos mucho, my shining star. An honor, thank you so very much for this. I realized a couple of years ago that divisive language was getting too much traction, really putting a threat to derail the progress that we're making as humanity. That is how the World Human Foundation was created at that very moment where I wanted to re remind people of that same principle, that we're all human, that we belong to the same human family. Because real bad things happen when we forget. You see uh, divisions, Brexit, killings, otherness creations. And uh, being the optimist and the fixer that I am, I know that change is really possible. And I will not stop. And my foundation will not stop until we see a pattern on a trajectory to making sure that we can move the world from tolerance to acceptance. And where we actually are able to see change and all of us guiding racism to being something of the past, being socially unacceptable as a pattern. And that is important because we're bombarded by negative news that makes us forget that there's a great deal of beauty out there and champions making a difference, making the world uh, better for all of us, more inclusive, more accepting, valuing the beauty that comes in the social tapestry that makes us all human. So thank you. Thank you for bringing a light on the initiatives and the efforts that we're making to make a difference. Gracias y un abrazo, Global Minded. Hello, I'm John Diaz, formerly with the San Francisco Chronicle. On behalf of last year's winner, Michelle Norris, I am pleased to introduce the 2021 Global Minded Inclusive Leader in Media and the Arts. Now you could say there's no one like our winner, but in fact, she's an identical twin. One of three sisters, she grew up in an Italian family on Long Island. Her father, a chief of police, instilled in his girls a strong moral compass. Her mother insisted her daughters go to college and be financially independent. All three did just that. She has rallied her teams to win at every level, launching Peacock to the Olympics, creating the hashtag She's My to celebrate the powerful women in our lives, and bringing her entire company together as one platform. At NBC Universal, she's paved the way for a new generation of leaders, supporting mentorships for women and people of color, return shifts for parents re-entering the workforce, residencies for veterans, and opportunities for folks whose drive speaks louder than any line on their resumes. Through it all, she has stayed true to the values her parents instilled in her. With warmth and humor, she'll welcome you to the family table with her husband, Claude, and their two kids, Christian and Matthew. It's a table where everyone is included. It is my honor to introduce this year's winner, Linda Yaccarino. Thank you so much, John. And thank you so much to everyone at Global Minded for this honor. I was thinking about this award 
And I remembered a quote by a former SNL staffer named Dean Abadala. And he speaks to the significance of this honor and really the mission of this wonderful organization. Dean said that the more diversity equals better comedy. Now, of course, it's not just better comedy or better news or better movies. As Global Minded has always championed, more diversity also equals better business. When you fill that big family table with people from every walk of life, that's how we create more innovation. It's how we turn innovation into transformation. Every day, this industry continues to pull up more chairs and we need to keep working. So that trend continues and actually accelerates. Making sure more women are responsible for revenue and running actual businesses, that more people of color sit in the writer's room and the boardrooms, that members of the veteran LGBTQ and disability communities shape the stories we tell and the business decisions behind them. If we invest our time and resources into mentorships, partnerships, and returnships that help people succeed, then we can scale diversity across every level. That's how we transform our culture within the entire industry. It's why it's so exciting and I'm so proud to accept this award and continue the work alongside all of you. Thank you again for this incredible honor. Hi, I'm Sheetal Shah of the American Federation of Teachers. As the 2020 honoree, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the 2021 Global-Minded Inclusive Leader in the Foundation and Funders category. Our winner opted out of a career in banking at the age of 23. The experience of working from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. for three years straight resulted in an all work and no play, not the life she had imagined. She pivoted to the nonprofit world, dedicating her life to serving others. Her first assignment as a social worker was in Mobile, Alabama. She visited a family with two babies living in public housing with so many roaches, the walls seemed to move. But by 6 p.m. that day, she had them in another house. At 25, she was outraged that people lived in such dire poverty. Vowing to change the system led to a series of successive leadership roles nationally and globally. All of these experiences brought her to her current role, president and CEO of the Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy, creating opportunities for 130 million American adults who lack proficiency in literacy. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to this year's winner, British Robinson. Thank you so much, Chappelle, and thank you, Global Mind, for this incredible honor. Throughout my career, I've had the honor to work with some of the country's most prominent organizations to tackle today's pressing concerns, including cancer, HIV and AIDS, women's heart disease, and refugee issues. Today, as I lead the Barbara Bush Foundation's efforts to solve our nation's literacy crises, I call upon my colleagues in philanthropy and beyond to boldly look at old problems with new and more effective funding models. I ask for collaboration with those who are normally not at the table of privilege. I ask for our circles to be wider, our perspectives to be broader, and our hearts to be bigger, to understand, to respond to those and work with those who most need our help on the ground. Using technology and innovation programming, I believe we can create a more equitable America in which all adults have the opportunity to read, write, and comprehend in order to navigate the world and their lives with dignity. Solving this challenge will not only equip all adults to fully participate in our society as parents, workers, and citizens, but will strengthen families, communities, and our nation as a whole for generations to come. Thank you again for this tremendous honor. My name is Martha Ronquillo Newhart. 
and I'm the Chief Communications Officer at Westinghouse Electric. It's my distinct honor to present this year's Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award in the General Leadership and Equity category. Our winner's parents were enormously industrious despite being high school dropouts after getting pregnant at 17. His dad, though only earning a GED, provided a middle-class lifestyle with a home and two cars, while his wife was a homemaker with three children by the age of 20. But with a home and two cars, while his wife was a homemaker, his parents were 25 when his father suddenly felt his youth slipping away. They subsequently divorced, and he and his two sisters, ages seven, six, and five, were mostly with their mother. Her main driving force was seeing education as the great equalizer. He shared, if we had bad grades, we got no dinner. More than just preach, she modeled education and got her LPN degree at the community college and then a registered nurse, she went on to earn her bachelor's degree. One day when he told his mom that one of his teachers was racist, she freaked out, not about the teacher, but at him. She said, what someone else thinks of you is not your business. Everyone feels discriminated against for something. Your path is to be successful despite the obstacles. At 23, our winner had only obtained an undergraduate degree, but had also was also a practicing lawyer after graduating with honors from law school. This year, he won CEO of the Year Award, and his proudest achievement is being known as Mr. Dad to his 11-year-old daughter. It is my distinct delight to introduce you to this year's winner, Johnny Taylor the president of the Society of Human Resource Managers. Congratulations, Donnie. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've spent my professional life as a lawyer, an HR executive, and a CEO committed to ensuring that we do more than just talk about value and diversity and inclusion, but that we actually live those principles. It dawned on me over the last 18 months as I engaged in serious introspection about the state of our society, Yes, that was my COVID clarity moment, that we are as diverse as we've ever been and at once as divided as we've ever been. This is not good. HR professionals have a unique opportunity to help solve for this most vexing social challenge by using the eight to 10 hours per day. We have our employees' hearts and minds captive and can persuade them to embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion for all. Accepting the Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award is a recognition of my past work, but more importantly, it obligates me to use my role as the leader of the world's largest human resources professional association with hundreds of thousands of people around the globe to help us once and for all achieve a truly inclusive society. Thank you again. I am humbled. Hello, I am Helen Young Hayes, founder of Activate Work, and I'm pleased to introduce the 2021 Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award winner in the nonprofit sector. Our winner is a citizen of the Chi Kongu Lakota Nation and president and CEO of the American Indian College Fund. A lifelong educator and community activist who grew up on the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota. She became an advocate for Native American self-determination in her youth. Her work ensures that Native voices, philosophies, and traditions are amplified through school curricula and in the media as the heart of the important work of building prosperity in Native communities for current and future generations. She attributes her success to her identity as a Lakota woman because based on the traditional teachings of her people, women are allowed status and influence. While still in high school, she received her Lakota name, Wa Chen Yon Pi Wen, meaning they depend on her. Her grandmother gave her this name when she saw the many ways she took care of others. Indeed, she personifies her name, Cheryl Crazy Bull. Thank you, Helen. 
Relatives, I greet you with a good heart and a handshake. Wopila, thank you. I am honored to accept this award. Centuries of warfare, as well as social and economic pressures and oppressive policies have rendered American Indians and Alaska Natives nearly invisible in American society. But now is a time of racial reckoning. Accountability of our institutions and leaders to close the intentional systems of disparity tracing back to colonial times is at the forefront of opportunity and activism. November is Native American Heritage Month. Every day is Indigenous Peoples Day, but we recognize that designations provide a pathway for learning. Inclusion happens for us when we are fully represented in curriculum, when we are visible in employment and in elected office, and when we are represented in the media. Equity is often viewed as happening when there is fairness. I would argue that the true meaning of equity for indigenous people is justice. And justice happens when we are restored to the fullness of life that our ancestors lived. Lives that were rich with an abundance of resources, deep connections to land and family, and with profound relations with creation. My request to all of you is to look towards us, to make sure we are included and to ally yourselves with us for justice. Kalamayapi. Thank you all. Hello, I'm Will Kennedy, a Senior Program Officer at the United Nations Office for Partnerships in New York, and a proud winner of the 2020 Global Minded Inclusive Leader Award for Global Impact. It is my great honor to introduce this year's award winner, whose parents were teenagers when they ran away to get married. His dad in the Navy, his mother a recent high school graduate. They lived in Section 8 public housing. One day when he was in the third grade, his father out at sea, our winner came home from school to find his mother passed out. They learned later that she had stage four cancer. After she died, he and his brothers and sisters were split up, living in various parts of the country. They moved constantly, 21 times to be exact, before he graduated from high school. He would later say, I experienced the country at a lot of different levels in working class neighborhoods. Educated at Iowa State University and, and later a vice provost at Columbia University, he went to Arizona State University in 2002 to create what he called the new American University. One that would measure itself by whom it includes and how they succeed. Today, ASU is widely recognized as one of the most innovative universities in America and many would say the world. One that embraces and now reflects the values of a man whose father once told him, you're gonna to have to figure this out for yourself. Our winner has done just that. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Michael Crow. Hi, Michael Crow here. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I really uh, uh, am honored by this uh, Global Minded Award. Uh, we're here. Uh, uh, rethinking everything with the rate of globalization, the rate of change, the speed of change, social change, technological change, what we realized is that universities are uh, wholly inadequate in general to uh, the rate of change, the speed of change, the diversification of knowledge production, you know, all the things that are really going on. So we've really worked to rethink everything, rethink our culture, making it student centric versus faculty centric, uh, building inclusivity, focusing on the notion of impact and taking responsibility for our communities. Uh, building adaptability, nimbleness, uh, enhancing our, our value and our return to the public. I mean, just rethinking everything. And so it really is the case that it is still possible to uh, uh, re rebuild a university, reconceptualize a university, still be involved in knowledge production and research and make things happen, but also now taking on this whole notion of enhanced access for the, for the success of democracy, enhancing excellence and having deep impact uh, on our communities. Uh, we are fully aware of uh, the physical changes, the social changes that are occurring and are needed and uh, deeply committed to making these things happen. And so I just uh, want to say thank you on behalf of the entire university for the global minded uh, recognition and look forward to uh, uh, getting together and working in the future. Thank you. Thanks again to all of you. And before we conclude tonight's ceremony, we would be remiss if we didn't thank some of the other global minded team members and board members and volunteers. And Saleh, who's based in Istanbul, and Maddie, who's based in Madrid, uh, Charlie, who's here in Denver, and several other of our team. And then our most valuable player, many of you know, is Celeste Gardner. Celeste, 
please join us to say a few words. Well, thank you so much, Carol. It's just been a pleasure to be part of all this. Very honored to get to work with everyone. Thank you so much, Celeste. And thanks to all of you who put so much into this special evening. And finally, I'd like to turn it back over to Dr. Crystal Rose, who is our executive producer, to close us out with some final comments. Crystal, thanks so much. Thank you, Carol and Celeste. As we come to the conclusion of our ceremony, it is my honor to thank our inclusive leaders for all of their important work in their respective fields and for the standard taking for inclusion, diversity, and equity. Congratulations. And to our audience, thank you for joining us for one of the most inspirational moments of this year as you're doing your part in helping us create the world our future requires. So grateful to have you alongside us. We look forward to seeing you next year. Yeah.